So let's start with some concepts that are used in projectile motion problems. If you need to review anything, you can watch the lesson videos and check out the previous lessons. Here's some of the important things to remember about projectile motion. X and Y are independent. So an object's motion in the X direction is independent from its motion in the Y direction. The acceleration due to gravity, G, is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards, so the vertical acceleration, AY, is either positive or negative G, depending on which direction we choose to be positive. The horizontal acceleration is zero, so the horizontal velocity, VX, is constant, and it's always the same as the initial horizontal velocity. And if an object moves up and then falls down, the vertical velocity, VY, is zero at the maximum height. We also need to understand the graphs for projectile motion. Next, we need to know how to use the kinematic equations for the x and y directions. Since there's no acceleration in the x direction, we only use the first equation that relates the x position, velocity, and time. Since we do have acceleration in the y direction, we won't use this first equation unless we want to find the average velocity between two points. And remember that delta means final minus initial, which applies to any variable. You might see some equations use t for time, and others have delta t. In most cases, we just say the initial time is zero seconds, so t and delta t mean the same thing. And for two-dimensional projectile motion, we need to know how to work with vectors and trigonometry. A vector and its two components form a right triangle, so we can use right triangle trig to find the components, the magnitude, or the angles. It's better to know how to apply the trig relationships instead of memorizing if x or y goes with sine or cosine, because that depends on the angle that we're using. Now let's cover a few tips for solving these types of problems. Tip number one, choose the origin and the positive x and y directions. We always want to establish the origin before starting a problem. That's the point where x and y equal zero, and which directions are positive. It's common to set up the origin on the ground, and so the initial x position is zero. Once you set up the origin, stay consistent with the positive and negative directions, and the positive and negative values in the equations. The vertical acceleration is g, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. So if we say up is the positive y direction, gravity acts in the negative direction, and ay equals negative g. And if down is positive, gravity acts in the positive direction, so ay equals positive g. Tip number two, the x motion and the y motion are independent. This only applies to two-dimensional motion, but an object's motion in the x direction and the y direction are independent from each other. If we're given the initial velocity and an angle, we usually need to find the x and y components of the initial velocity vector, which will be the initial x velocity and the initial y velocity. Remember that cosine is for the component that's adjacent to the angle, and sine is for the component opposite the angle. Once we have the initial x and y velocities, we can use the 1D kinematic equations for each direction separately. But remember that time is the same for both directions, so the value of t is the same in the x and y equations at the same moment in time, and we can use the time variable as a link between the x and y equations. And when working with 2D projectile motion, keep the variables and equations for the x and y motions organized. There's a lot of variables and subscripts, so we want to be clear about which values we're given and what we're trying to find. And tip number three, some problems require multiple steps. This applies to any physics topic, but when starting a problem, write out all the known and unknown values for the x and y directions. Then we can look through the list of equations that apply and ask ourselves which kinematic equation has the variables we already know and the variable we're looking for. If we can't solve a problem using one equation, 
Then we should start with the variable we're looking for and work backwards, and use multiple equations to find intermediate variables. For example, let's say we already wrote down all the variables we know, and the question wants us to find the final x position. If we look at the equations, the first one is the only equation that has that variable. Let's say we know the initial x position and the time, but we don't know the x velocity, so we need to find that first. Maybe we can use a trig relationship because we know the initial angle, theta. But if we don't know the initial y velocity, then we need to find that, maybe using another kinematic equation. If we know all of the other variables, then we can start with that equation and work backwards. We find the initial y velocity, then we find the initial x velocity, and then we can find the final x position. In general, it helps to write everything out and think through the problem before starting. So those are some concepts and tips for solving projectile motion problems.